I wanted to talk about the subject of how beautiful it is when we can have faith and proof at the same time. I recall when I was first learning about Islam, I was actually trying to teach a Muslim about Christianity. And I was telling them, oh, look at Christianity. This is something good. Why don't you come be a Christian like us? And my friend, the Muslim, was saying to me, well, I will. I will go to your religion if your religion is better than my religion. I thought about that and I said, well, I guess we're going to have a new Christian now because number one, in Christianity it's very easy. You don't have to pray five times a day as a Christian. You don't have to fast the month of Ramadan. You don't have to pay any zakah. There are many, many things Muslims have to do that Christians don't have to do. But then he finished the sentence and he said to me, I will become whatever your religion is. If it's better than my religion, but you need proof. And I remember saying to him, Proof! Proof! Religion's not about proof. Faith is just about believing. Just have faith. You don't need any proof. He said, well, in my religion, Islam, we have both. We have faith and we have proof. And I remember saying to him, How? You mean to tell me you can prove things? He said, yes. Everything in Islam can be proven. Then I said, do you mean to sit there and tell me as a Muslim that you can prove there's God? Then he said to me, do you mean to sit there and tell me as a Christian and a preacher that you can't? Well, I had to think about that. Hmm, okay. So Islam is saying there's proof. Actually, more than that. Islam asks us to use our mind, our aql, to determine and find out things about the things around us. The things that we take for granted every day actually are a big part of what Islam is teaching us. Islam asks us, look around you, examine the things, think, use your mind, and then, then you will begin to understand. One of the examples that we have in Islam is the Qur'an. The Qur'an of Allah, this is his speech to the human beings. And he's telling us in the Qur'an over and over and over, look at this and look at that. Think about this. Ask about that. And then the answers that come. Often we find the term yasalunika in the Quran. This means the people are asking Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about something. And then Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, He's giving the answers in His speech, the Quran. Always throughout Islam, as we're learning and teaching, we're coming back to this thing called the mind, the aql. You can use your mind. You can determine a lot of the things that you see around you things that you take for granted every day. You can look to this, you can look to that and begin to discover a whole new world around you. This is one of the beauties of Islam. I remember in the Quran when I first read it the very first time that it was telling me about this straight path and I was thinking, what's that about? And here it is, you read it in the very opening of the Quran in chapter 1 called Fatiha. There are only seven verses and listen to what it says. It says, Ihdina Suratu Mustaqim. Now we've talked about some of the other verses in the Quran, but today let's look at that. What is what does that mean? Ihdina. Well, Ihdi is coming from Hidayah or guidance. Ihdina, guide us. Surat, this is a straight path. Mustaqim. And this means the straight path which you're going to stay on this thing and you're going to go with it. How about the idea here that you've only asked for one thing out of seven verses in this chapter? Only one thing you ask for, guidance. Because now this is showing you, for instance, that there's only one straight path, but many people could be on that path at the same time. Guide us to your straight path. And this is a a request. We're making this request to Almighty Allah. We're asking Him to guide us. Now, watch what happens when we go into the next chapter. We go to the next chapter and it says, Alif Lam Mim. It says that is the book, meaning the book of the law, 
wherein there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And then the word huda, it means what? Guidance. The guidance to the straight path is right here in this book. Just a few verses after you ask for it. Ehdina saratu mustaqim. Here it comes. Huda le mutaqim. And what is mutaqim? It's those who are having taqwa. Taqwa for Allah. Now look at this word. And it's so beautiful when you know the Arabic language. The taqwa means to put a partition, a veil, a barrier between you and the punishment of Allah. So if the person is a believer in Allah and he's trying his best to please Allah and not displease Allah so as to not get Allah's anger on him, then this person, he's going to be on the guidance, the Huda. And this is really what it's all about. I recall when I first came to Egypt the very first time and a friend of mine was a doctor and I was going down to his place on the Nahar Neel, which is the Nile River. And he asked me a question. He said, can you tell us what it's like to go from some other religion, to go from what you were in before, to come into Islam? Could you tell us about it? I said, well, I don't know how I would describe something like that. And then I realized, I said, okay. I was looking at a boat in the water in the Nile River, the Nahar Neel. I said, there's one word I need from you. He said, what word? I said, the back of the boat. There's this thing, you steer the boat. What do you call this? He said, Duffa. Duffa. What is Duffa? This is the thing in the back of the boat to steer. Okay. Now I can tell you. I said, imagine yourself now for a minute. That you're out in the water, you're here in this boat, and you're blindfolded. And you can't hear. Something's in your ears, your eyes are closed, and you have no duffa. You don't have a steering wheel. You're just in the boat. You feel the boat moving this way and that way and this way and that way and you have no idea. And this is all you've ever known. Oh, you feel the wind. You feel the water if it rains. You feel the motion but you don't know where you're going or why and you have no idea what your purpose is to be there. Then suddenly one day somebody removes this blindfold from you. Somebody is taking this stuff out of your ears. You can see, you can hear and most important they're giving you the steering wheel, the duffa. Now, this is the difference because when you come to Islam you can see, you can hear and you have control. You have the control over your life. Now, by the way, just in case you didn't catch this, this is a good parallel because just because you have a steering wheel, just because you can see, just because you can hear, doesn't guarantee that you're going to go the right way, does it? No. But it sure gives you a head start over the guy who's sitting in another boat with his eyes closed, ears are plugged up, and he has no duffa. Make sense? Yeah makes a lot of sense. And that's what I want to come back to again and mention that Islam has these beauties. And this one particular beauty where you're to use your mind and you can ask questions and you can get real answers. Answers that really when you think about it they make a lot of sense. You're not forced to just accept something that somebody says just have faith brother. Just have faith. Well faith is great. If you've got something to base it on. If you can see something, you can hear something, and you have some control, some steering wheel, this is a great advantage. And it's probably one of the bigger attractions, I think, of all of the beauties of Islam that we've been talking about. I think this is one of the most emphatic of all of them. That it comes to you in a way that once you start using your mind and your heart, and then you see what Allah is having in front of you, it becomes a lot easier, a lot easier to accept and then to put into practice. All of this is just one of the many beauties of Islam. The beauties of Islam are many and if we tried to enumerate them and count them, I think we would run out of time. And we're running out of time even now as I'm speaking to you. This program is too short. We wish we had more time to cover all of these beauties of Islam. and. When we think about it and examine this, this brain that we have and realize that it was given to us, the knowledge that we have, that we're thinking with, 
This is all part of something in the Quran which we find. Allah is telling us in the Quran clearly that He is the one that has all the knowledge. All the knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows everything of the creation around us, over us, under us. And we don't have any knowledge except the knowledge that He gives us. That's all we have. And He says that. We only have what He gives us. And by the way, He can take it back. Have you not noticed what happens when people become old and they get these uh, degenerative diseases of the mind like Alzheimer's? They can't remember things anymore. Their mind starts to go. Well, where did all that intelligence go that they had? Allah takes it back. So this knowledge, even the knowledge you and I have right now, that we're talking and you're listening and I'm saying something back and forth, all of this is from Allah. Maybe you'll remember tomorrow. Maybe not. All of this is coming back to the thing we started with, talking about using the mind. And the mind is a very important part of understanding Islam. And it's an important part of the beauties of Islam. Allah asks us in the Quran so many times using the expression, Alam tara kaifa. Don't they see how? Don't you notice how? Haven't you seen how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? This is one of the expressions Allah asks you. And He's asking you to use your brain, use your mind, think. So many times, so many times we've come to these beauties of Islam and we miss it. So I hope you don't miss it. I hope you will pay attention to this beautiful thing called the beauties of Islam. Until next time, this is Yusuf Estes reminding you about the beauties of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. When we open our eyes, that is where it starts. The journey of a soul, we guess in this world, our temporary home. Convey the message to everybody of Islam with kindness and love.